Hello, welcome to another of my video. Today we're gonna talk about the electrochemistry process of producing so sodium hydroxide, the alkaline, industrially. First, we're going to talk to the most original one from the membrane cells. The membrane itself for industrial is actually made of a piece of asbestos, but here I'm just using a piece of acrylic fabric or polyester. Anyway, should still do the trick. The membrane should allow the ions to pass, which cause the ion exchange, but in the same time keep the li liquid separate so you don't get contaminated and here is our basically two chambers one for the anode one for the cathode the sodium hydroxide will usually produce at the cathode industrially is called chloroalkali process which they will use sodium chloride to do the electrolysis but here i don't want to use chlor sodium chloride because because chloride ions will be eventually turned to chlorine at the anode which basically oxidizes back to chlorine from chloride but anyway i'm gonna use carbonates sodium carbonates so at the anode chamber i'm basically produce the carbon dioxide gas which is basically hyd hydrogen bicarbonate which is also known as carbonic acid but the carbonic acid itself isn't very st stable so it will decompose quickly into carbon dioxide but at the cathode compartment chamber will turn basically reduce the sodium ion back to sodium and anyway here is sodium carbonate i'm not gonna add in yet first i'm gonna add some water to my cathode chamber you can see even though we pour the water in the solution still hasn't poured in that's good the membrane itself will have a little bit of contaminations which has been reduced recently by the ion exchange membrane the special developed plastic for ion exchange which is quite expensive if you want to make high quality sodium hydroxide but mine just for some experiments after you produce it you can give itself a ph test but anyway, if you want the sodium hydroxide, you can simply boil them down. But make sure don't use any aluminium pot, or else it will dissolve it. Now I'm gonna add the carbonate. Carbonate of soda, known as the washing soda. But anyway, I prepared this myself by simply thermal decompose of bicarbonate into water and carbon dioxide. We want to make quite a concentrated solution here, so it's quite conductive. Anyway, it should be good enough just by some stirring. Now we have the both chambers around the same level. Anyway, the sodium ions will be exchange to the cathode chamber and carbonates will still stay in the anode chamber and now talk about the electrodes which is very important here i have a graphite substituted electrode because it's not chlorine it's not that nasty it should be fine with it for the cathode, which I'm gonna use copper, and this as my anode, which doesn't get oxidized. But aluminium itself will definitely, so I'm not gonna put this part in. Anyway, here will be my anode, and here will be the cathode. Now everything is nicely connected now. Crank up the voltage.
there's not an immediate fizz. Because there isn't any much ions in here yet. But when later on the electrolysis, there will be much more ions. And the fizz will become quicker and quicker. To increase the electrolysis, you can also increase the area of the electrode. You can also bring them closer to increase. But anyway, we're gonna just wait for a while. I'm gonna time lapse this. And here, the cell has been running for a while now. We can basically now test the pH by adding some liquid from the cathode chamber with some pH indicator to show you the pH. And here is the result. Yellow, which is pH 14, the highest pH in the pH table. Bas basically, it represents sodium hydroxide, strong alkali. And now I'm gonna tell you why you wouldn't want to use an aluminium pot to boil down your hydroxide. Here I have some foil of aluminium. Rub it down, pop it in. Soon it will start to fizz. Because the aluminium oxide will get dissolved up that way by the strong alkali. As you can see, it starts to bubbling slowly. Anyway, when you bubble it down, it will become reacts even faster. I'm gonna put a time lapse here. Now the dissolving is very fast now, the aluminum got dissolved. I can make it even faster by heating the liquid up. Now, being heated up in microwave, you see the bubbling is much more vigorously. And the reaction itself do release heat when aluminum got dissolved to form sodium alumate. We can use steel, which, uh, which sodium hydroxide wouldn't really dissolve to push it down. And then it will dissolve even faster. The best bit to make it even dissolve faster is by increase the surface area or increase the strength. Even though just after a couple of other hours of electrolysis it did give a good result. Now, we can basically see the sodium hydroxide do dissolve aluminium just from the cell we've made. Anyway, for a commercial plant, they will use asbestos instead of those acrylics or polyester because asbestos is much more stable. But asbestos is also a danger to the health because of its carcinogen because it is carcinogen and it can cause cancer if you breathe it in and anyway thanks for watching